Hello there, Jose Rodriguez back again. I'm going to take a short break from any more videos. It'll just be for today. I'll actually probably do something again tonight. But anyway, I just saw something on the Printer Knowledge Forum for printing. And Mike Chen from Precision Colors actually described what's going on. And it's this particular subject. A person who's using the refilling kit from his company, from Precision Colors, was wondering if he should change all of the chips from the original cards over to the CLI 8 cards that Precision Colors will actually sell you if you ask for them. Normally they just give you one card and that's just for the yellow which is the one that you need to use a clean card from the very beginning and you just take the chip from the original uh, CLI 42 yellow card and transplant that over to the CLI 8 yeah a little confusing but you know you know what I'm talking about you just swap the chip from the original yellow to the replacement yellow and fill that up from scratch with PC yellow ink in other words you will have no contact with original yellow and that's a problem mixing the two together or I believe is mixing anything to do with water the original yellow OEM ink that will cause the gelling it's, it's actually a reaction with water and I really don't know what the original base the liquid base for the Canon yellow ink is apparently it just doesn't like water so that's where the problem comes in anyway god I rambled too long okay so the guy was wondering about what do I do with my original cards and they don't have chips I have my uh, so-called compatible cards now filled with PC ink and he used the word compatible and I thought wait a minute you're not using compatibles you're using original cards for the Pro 9000 actually the CLI 9s and so he's confused so Mike chimes in and he says um, that he does not use compatibles or aftermarket as clearly it's noted in my description and not the same quality as real Canon. And let me just go through this real quick. Ink flow is not consistent. We're talking about the difference between the original sponges that are inside original Canon carts. They are dual layer or two levels of actual sponge composing the complete sponge okay you have a lower cavity that's filled with a high density sponge and that is for ink flow then you have an upper level that's low density sponge and that is made for allowing air to enter through the vent the compatibles that you may buy or may see on eBay do not have that dual level or dual layer sponge they cannot by law because this is patented so they just have a single layer and it's just not as efficient for flow and as you all know flow is everything with Canon printers without ink flow you will burn out your print head if you reduce the ability for that liquid ink to keep those resistors cool and you don't want to do that that's why it's important to have excellent ink flow so more importantly if they are used in a printer that is not used frequently so people who want to go with compatibles you better use your printer frequently and you better keep a really close eye on it to make sure that your ink flow is working okay and compatibles are not meant to be refilled the refillables for cannons are lacking another very important thing and it's also patented and I'll get into that in a minute so this causes ink to dry out and as a result the ink is pulled away from the nozzles by the sponge this if the printer is unused can cause a real clog why because the nozzles is no longer kept hydrated by the ink in the cart because the column has pulled away back toward the cartridge remember Mike is a, is a, is a printer engineer so he's using language that in phrases that he assumes people understand what he's talking about basically what he's doing is 
if you do not have the proper sponge in your cards when you don't use your printer the sponge can act as a backflow wick and pull away ink away from the print head nozzles and then what's left is nothing but air and that can just dry out any remnant of ink that may be still present and you will get a really true a real true clog which is almost unheard of on cannons uh, they do clog but it's for other reasons not that okay so there is now an air break between the nozzle and ink column I have tested this phenomenon with my own Pro 100 and this required a full two days of soaking the printhead to clear. To explain this on a page, meaning a couple of paragraphs, is impossible as most would not understand. He's right. <laughs> but the clear and best thing is to try and always use OEM cards in a domestic situation, especially when the printer gets light use. In a commercial setting, this drying out is not a problem. So all of you guys that are always harping about well how often do I need to use my printer or I can't afford the ink so therefore I only print very sporadically don't do that if you're gonna go the cheap way out and buy compatible cards or refillable cards don't you will then suffer from the problems that Mike is talking about. On the aftermarket cards the air serpentine meaning the on top of the cartridge I don't have one here in front of me I should have there is a little channel that's like a serpent it is just zigzag and this is almost completely covered by the label and when you peel off that little top piece of tape that opens up the end of the serpentine vent and allows air to actually infiltrate under the actual label and air travels through that little serpentine tunnel enters the sponge side of the printer and that's how air replaces the upper portion of the sponge as you draw ink out of the bottom portion of the sponge so these cheap compatibles and refillables cannot by law include a serpentine path and what a lot of the resellers do is to add they ask you to punch holes on top of the uh, sponge side which is ridiculous literally to just punch holes and insert needles in them wow okay so on the aftermarket cards the air serpentine is completely missing because to create such a thing is a lot more work and the air feed to the cart is about one eighth of an inch away from the atmosphere and it is not buffered at all so it acts as a buffering chamber also Canon's air serpentine is superior and more expensive to make even in a throwaway cart they choose to do it for a reason please understand that then there is the ink bridge the slots in the air feed the dual layer sponge for consistent air feed the variable density sponge around the ink outlet area and consistent quality don't be fooled these are all more expensive to make and some features are patented again this is the reason why my pro 100 kits only feature listen to this good Canon stuff not the aftermarket but if you really want the aftermarket then you can use them but proceed with your eyes open so for anybody that questions whether precision colors refill kit when you get that extra cart to replace the yellow one with whether it is an aftermarket cart or an original cart actually it is an original cart remember the Pro 900 Mark II CLI 9s are physically identical to CLI 42s they just have cosmetic differences a different label and a different chip that is the only difference and to get the best ink flow possible which is what your thermal printheads on Canon's demand you must use original carts I always suggest you have two sets of carts yeah that's gonna cost you more money initially but once you have those two sets working for you it's a matter of just having that secondary set that you have on standby always reset and filled waiting to be used as soon as one set goes low remove that complete set replace it with the brand new one you will only have one per cycle I know I say this a thousand times you guys must be 
sick of hearing me say that, but it's true. You will reduce your purge cycles. What will that do for you? It will extend your printer's life because the waste ink pads will only receive one cleaning cycle or one purge cycle every time you replace one complete set. By replacing a complete set, you can almost print for a month and a half without having to replace even the first cart. Okay? Unlike when you're doing single carts, you get into the situation where carts are constantly going low. Constantly. When magenta is low, you refill it, you put it in, and it goes through a purge cycle, and next thing you know, yellow is low. And next thing you know, gray is low. And, next, and so on and so on. So you don't want to get into that habit. But at first, when you're working with OEM, straight out of the box, you know, set up your printer with the setup carts. That's a must. We won't get into why, but that's a must. Then as one goes low, take it out, modify it like I showed you, fill it with PC inks, plug it back in, reset it, of course, prior to all of that, pop it back in. Do this until your complete set has been replaced. So yes, in the beginning, you will do a purge cycle every time you change a cart. Get yourself a second set. Spend that $115 or find someone who has a Pro 100, Pro 10, whatever the case might be, and see if you can finagle them to sell you a set of empties. They're very hard to find. I hardly see them, even on eBay. So once you do that and then you accumulate two complete sets, then slowly you begin to replace the originals with PC until you have two full sets running. At that point, then you can get into that good habit of just replacing a complete set of cards. You don't want to remove complete sets of cards when they're OEM filled. No, that's a waste of ink. So just follow that and you will be fine. And remember, stay away as far as you can, 10 foot pole away from compatibles and refillables for your really beautiful Canon printers. You would not want to do that to this gorgeous machine. Why? It's so much easier to just fill up or refill the original carts and that gives you the dependability and reliability of perfect ink flow assuming you do not damage anything when you're doing the refilling all right that is it i found this to be a very interesting uh, comment that i saw today i wanted to pass it on to you guys because he knows a hell of a lot more than i do about the actual hydraulics of you know ink flow and especially on sponge carts Epson carts are incredibly different, but also incredibly intricate in their internal structure. It's not just an open cavity like most refillables are, but Epsons are a lot more forgiving. Okay, just wanted to uh, bring this up again to you guys' attention. This is the print that I just made last night, and as you can see, there's absolutely no gloss differential. I see no bronzing whatsoever on this gorgeous image. These purples and blues match my monitor perfectly. Uh, just recently I saw a post about a person with a Pro 10 and it was named incredibly disappointed or something like that. And I thought, what the heck are you talking about? Well, it turns out he's printing out of a Mac. And Macs, apparently, since they do a lot of things automatically behind the scenes, there's something about a certain setting, a certain type of, uh, I think it's air print or something like that that gets automatically installed and it causes color shifts. So beware, beware folks. Um, I don't want to flame any Mac users, but that is the reason I left Mac and went to a strictly uh, Windows system for all of my printing. When I decided to set up this print room, I needed something that was predictable and reliable and to me, uh, at least for me, there are those who can print flawlessly with Macs and more power to them. They know how to do it. Um, apparently the information doesn't get passed on to users quite often, but for me, Windows is what works. And that's just my preference. Again, no meaning to you know flame any Mac users out there. Macintosh is a wonderful system as well. They're just not really friendly for home printing photographs for some reason. They want to take over the whole process and when you try to use um, your own ingenuity and your own thinking when you try to do your own color management it tends to sort of uh, cause problems and you got to be able to uh, know how to diagnose those things all right so here is the glossy version with the Pro 10 again beautiful smooth gloss all the way across and I only used the 
auto setting, which means it only applied chroma optimizer where it's supposedly needed to apply it. There's also a full setting where you apply chroma optimizer evenly across the surface, and that should give you an even more uh, even coating, I should say. All right. I also learned today that the chroma optimizer for the Pro 10 that you buy is not really the super glossy stuff, but the Pro 1 for some reason is. That made no sense to me because the two printers basically use the same ink set. The only difference between the two, this one only has one gray and the Pro 1 has three levels of gray. So there you go. All right. But that's, you know, that's a little bit getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this bit of information. This was quite news to me. I really didn't know the actual reasons that these refillables or compatible carts don't really work too well with cans. I always thought it was more because of the way the carts actually join and seal against the printhead. But that seems to be more a problem with a sys unit than with compatible carts. All right, so please like, please share, please subscribe. And I'll see you pretty soon with some more videos about the Pro 10. I have a Canon Vixia HS R700, who cares, <laughs> coming in today to replace my original Canon that just died the other night. I'm working with my action cam right now. I'm also getting a new action cam tomorrow, SJ Cam 5000X Elite, which is supposed to be really, really great. Hopefully it comes with the upgraded firmware. I'll do a video on that as well. And I'll do an unboxing for the Canon uh, video camera that I'm receiving today later on. Alright, so again, happy printing and bye-bye.